So you've all probably heard of Kensington. No, not the London neighborhood, but the manufacturers of the Kensington lock. You know, that little locking slot that pretty much every laptop nowadays has, but pretty much no one uses. Yeah, I've never heard about it until you brought it up the other day, but good for them. But what you might not know is that they are also the manufacturers of some pretty cool docking stations, like this one for iPads. Well, so aside from a more convenient place to hold your tablet or phone, are there any other benefits to using a product like this? The idea of docking stations is simple, really. It's all about convenience. I use one for my ThinkPad as I move around all day using my laptop. I don't want to be connecting and disconnecting cables all the time. Mm. So I have a docking station at my desk with all the cables plugged in. When I finally have the time to sit down at my desk, all I need to do is take my ThinkPad, plop it onto the docking station, and now all of a sudden my keyboard, my mouse, my screen, my ethernet, it's all connected automatically. What I'd never thought of is needing one for a tablet, which is exactly what this docking station by Kensington is. A docking station for your iPad. Say what you want about Apple, but they've really managed to spread their ethos of simple minimalist design. Even though their original message was to be different, think different, and then they came out with the original iMac computers that had different case colors in a world where all PCs were just bog standard white. Totally, I remember that. I remember back in university, well, I'm really dating myself now, but it was the first time I saw someone using one of those green transparent plastic computers. It really did make me rethink what a computer is and what it should or could look like. And all looking pretty much the same, thanks to Apple. And that same attention to design and form factor is still present in all Apple products and has become so iconic to the brand. Right. Just looking at this, I could see all of these clean aluminum lines, the way the black and silver play off of each other, the rounded edges, and the polished finish. If I didn't know better, I would think that it was created by Apple themselves, or at least someone that was kidnapped from the design team. And just like their $800 wheels, I almost expect an $800 price tag for this dock. But no, this Kensington iPad dock is half that, coming in at around $400. Oh, okay, okay. So I wouldn't call it a budget or entry level product. I mean, that's about half the price of a low end iPad. Right, so is, is the Kensington iPad dock worth it? Let's find out. So how does it work? Well, it's simple really. You get to your desk, you slide your iPad into it, and you're connected to all your devices via the ports on the back. I wanna break. Either the stand. Lot of boring math later. Thousands of tears later. Really? Much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Eventually. The stand itself has a nice swivel counter to hold your iPad at any angle, or you can even spin it around between portrait and desktop mode. Once connected via the USB-C port here, your iPad is constantly being charged. Yeah, and with the power button on the side, you can forget about touching the iPad and just turn it on and off through the docking station itself. But that's not all. It'd be pretty stupid to pay $400 for just an iPad stand that you can swivel. No, the whole point of a docking station like this is the ports on the back. Ports which allow you to stay connected to multiple other devices, accessories, and services. Right, so let's talk about the keyboard. At its core, one of the main functionalities of a docking station is to allow you to constantly have a keyboard and mouse plugged in so that when you do sit down at your desk and plug in your computer or tablet or phone, wait, does this work on the iPhone? No. No? Okay, well, too bad. Anyway, once you have your tablet plugged in, you could switch right over to the external keyboard and mouse without any other cables or lines to mess with or clutter your desktop. And the Kensington dock does this surprisingly well. The first time I plugged in my non-Apple mouse and keyboard, I really thought we were gonna run into some problems. You know, knowing Apple, the way they shut off their ecosystem, I thought they'd lock us out from using non-Apple devices. But no, they, they work. You have this nice little round cursor moving around the screen. And you can click on things just as you would on a normal iPad yeah. or desktop. Well, we did notice that some of the shortcuts do take a little getting used to. And I'm surprised that some really basic functions that you'd expect to work don't cross over to the tablet world. So like opening an app and a message box pops up, you'd think you can just escape out of it, but you can't. It's also pretty weird using the mouse as the scrolling logic follows the same as you do with your fingers on the screen. You know how you'd swipe up to scroll down? That feels perfectly logical and natural on an iPad because we've gotten so used to it. 
but put it on the mouse and that feels pretty weird having to scroll up. I also couldn't quite get the mouse buttons to work. You know, I mean, your regular click does work, uh, left click, but if you try doing anything else with the middle click, the right click, especially on these fancy mice with tons of buttons, nothing works. So there are a few hiccups and inconveniences, but otherwise it works as expected. There's no lag as you type, and the mouse moving around the screen feels natural, and apps respond to the left click pretty good. And there's an HDMI port around the backside that will mirror onto your secondary display. I mean, it's pretty cool. I have a pretty big screen here that I can now use my iPad on, but there are some limitations here as well. And the problem here isn't the Kensington dock itself, but rather how iOS handles second screens. You see, you can't really extend your screen, and for some reason, Apple hasn't figured out how to change the resolution or dimensions of your secondary screen. So what you're getting is essentially a magnified version of your iPad. Yeah, ouch. There are some nasty black vertical borders along either side of the screen, which reminds me of some of the old video games that I used to play, those old simulators. I mean, sorry, emulators that I play on my own PC, and I'm guessing it's really the same problem that's there. And the UI leaves a lot to be desired as well. As we said when we were talking about the keyboard and the mouse, the UI on the iPad is really meant to be used with your fingers. All those menus that you need to swipe down or swipe up, pull from the corner, do random things. Yeah, like one of those UIs in sci-fi movies, uh, you know, where you're interacting with the digital UI projected onto the sky and always involving moving a box from the right to the left. The Ethernet works great. Another great feature of docking stations that I'd never thought would ever be applied to tablets. It's like tablets were meant to be connected by Wi-Fi, and that's what we've gotten used to. But the Kensington now lets me enjoy gigabit speeds directly from my iPad. You have anything to add? Yeah, no. I mean, it's just an Ethernet port. It's not meant to do anything fancy. What I do find interesting are the extra USB-C and USB-A ports on the side and the back. Even though I've tried connecting an SSD to our iPads before without too much success, this is now infinitely more convenient. Your iPad might have 128 gigabytes of internal storage. It might have two terabytes if if you know you can afford that. But with the convenience of this docking station, you can easily have a four terabyte SSD plugged in all day with your work files. Sit at your desk and boom, you have access to everything. I honestly didn't think it would work. When we connected it, there's no message or pop-up saying that we now have external storage. But then if we look in the file manager and boom, all of a sudden there it is. And it works just as it should. Yeah, copying files to and from your iPad is almost easier with the mouse. It's something that you're used to doing on a desktop. But everything else to do with file management feels a little bit awkward. And again, this isn't a problem of the Kensington dock itself, but just with the iOS implementation or non-implementation of its desktop mode. I found I kept having to <laughs> remind myself that this isn't a desktop and the normal things that you could do on a MacBook or whatever laptop won't work on your iPad. Which I guess is actually a good problem. If the device worked that intuitively, I mean, for the most part, that's a plus. It must be what the product developers were intending when they developed this. Yeah, I guess. For tons of things work related, for entertainment, it just works. Movies play as you'd like them to. You can browse the internet as you'd expect, even though it is it is a mobile browser, of course. And if your iPad is powerful enough, you can even do basic Photoshop and Illustrator tasks directly from your tablet, now turned into the desktop. The final convenience that this Kensington docking station brings is wireless charging here at the bottom. It has two charging modules, one on the left, for your iPhone or AirPods, and one on the right for another iPhone. See this little square here? Line it up, get your AirPods there in the middle, boom, charging. Or just put your iPhone wherever you want. Yeah, there's also a little module that you can extend your Kensington docking station with that attaches over here. Uh, from where you can hang your Apple Watch and have it wirelessly charge as well. Yeah. So, although I wonder, I wonder if you flip it round, if you're just kind of strapping the Apple Watch to the charging module, flip it around, it's just gonna drop off the bottom right there. I'd have to assume so. They're not idiot proof, I guess. <laughs> or that needs a magnet. We need a magnet in there. Definitely, magnets on everything, please. Yeah. In conclusion, this seems like every Apple fanboy's wet dream. Having all your Apple devices on display right in front of you, iPad, check. iPhone, iPhone. check. <laughs> AirPods, <laughs> check. iWatch, well, it should be there. Yeah, and finally, the Kensington dock itself. 
that looks like it came straight out of the mind of Steve Jobs himself. Yeah, but can you fully replace an actual desktop computer or laptop, and can they become your office workstation? I don't really think so. It's, it, it's a nice to have, and if you, if you like traveling to work light, it'll definitely help. I mean, all you need to do is grab your iPad, boom, you've got a computer when you get to work. And if Apple works on their desktop display, pseudo desktop users, the way they interact in yeah. their next update, I think it could actually replace your computer. But as it stands, the iPad interface just isn't quite there yet to be trusted as your only workstation. Having said that, for Apple lovers, this could be a great addition to their workspace. One of my friends loves drawing on her iPad, and I let her use this for a week, and she said it was super convenient to have her iPad just fixed in place. You know, she could swivel it around, draw in it. It's almost like a painter's easel. Although she did complain that the stand is slightly too high to be drawing on. I mean, picture you're sitting down drawing like this. Maybe standing up, it'd be better. So in the end, this feels like a great add-on to make your Apple life more seamless and more convenient than it ever was. But not a must-have for an average user. Especially not if you don't have an iPad. Yeah, if you don't have an <laughs> iPad, this product is definitely not for you. So yeah, I'm Dan. And I'm Rafi. And this was Tech I Want. And if you liked our video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. You know, what do you think about this Kensington docking station? Is it worth it? You know, or would you use it? I mean, it's $400. Uh, $400 for a little laptop stand to attach your keyboard? You tell me. Till next time, this was Tech I Want. Bye-bye.